very interesting to see where the the CEOs of the various different organizations across the various different industries still have the same positive outlook on growth, still have the same positive outlook on whether they'd be increasing their investment either locally or abroad, and also still have the same outlook on whether their jobs are going to be grown or they're going to be moving more towards the digitalization area or the mechanization area. Uh, where increasingly we saying we seen companies saying, well, in order to reduce costs, we'd rather invest in technology rather than invest in people. This is not a time to be a shrinking violet. CEOs really need to be bold in what they do. Uh, you can either be bold and increase uh, and take risks in an environment where the rewards are greater, or you can currently batten down the hatches do business as usual and uh, just and, and and have the ability to survive but not the ability to comprehensively grow. Uh, CEOs uh, really are in a driving position um, and hopefully the usual things that worry a CEO can and automatically have to be dealt with. For example, making sure the systems are in place, making sure that the company runs properly, uh, internally, the external market is really where the CEO strategy will be telling, especially in these times of uncertainty. What we're also looking at is Europe on the verge of um, finding itself. Is it really uh, the one-state solution that's tried to happen in, in the broader context of Europe? really going to work? Are other countries also going to try to uh, exit from Europe? Um, two or three years ago we had Greece on the, on, the br on the brink of being bankrupt and there were talks of Greece leaving or exiting. Uh, we now we've got Brexit and who knows who may be next? Is it Portugal? Is it Spain? We all know that these economies have uh, very fragile economies. Africa probably provides, in overall, a better chance of growth, probably because it comes off a lower base. But if you look at Africa, and the numbers are there for everybody to see, we have just under a billion people in Africa. It's expected to rise to about two billion people by about 2035. Uh, so where are the opportunities? Well, if you look at the growth, we have what they call a, so a, demo, a demographic dividend. What is that? The demographic dividend is where we have more than 40% of the population under the age of 15. So that's a powerful message to send to any business leaders and business decisions um, in terms of this is the population, there's growth coming in through and it's coming through at the younger ages. Um, a more educated, a more uh, agile workforce can only mean good business. Um, the other areas that Africa can adopt it can adopt a closer or more faster route to actually adopting the Internet of Things. Um, we see countries such as Rwanda adopting this and rolling out uh, Wi-Fi networks across the rest of Africa, uh, across the whole of Rwanda. Uh, we see countries like Tanzania rooting out corruption. Uh, the, the, late, uh, the new president has recently sacked just under 10,000 civil uh, servants purely because they had fake certificates and now is trying to re-employ 15,000 civil servants but obviously going through the right verification checks. Um, Africa is really an untapped market. Reason for that is uh, if you just take agriculture, about 10% of the available land is cultivated in Africa. But we import probably about more than what we can consume. But we should be able to be exporting high quality, nutritious food to the rest of the world. And that in itself will have an agricultural dividend. Uh, the policies of government now need to come through and make that happen, make that environment for growing that agricultural dividend real. Um, but that can only come with political certainty and with firmness, and firmness in leadership and clear direction of where things are going. In South Africa, we have our same issues as well in terms of uncertainty. Politics is there. We're all wondering who's going to be the next South African president. 
Uh, there's internal politics within the African National Congress. Uh, I think every week or every other week there's a court uh, case that's been levied against one political party or another. Uh, even the opposition parties are not uh, excluded from this, with uh, Helen Zilla now <laughs> being pushing for potential suspension from the Democratic Alliance. So it's a very interesting time in the political environment. Um, I think it's going to get very heated up as the conference where we uh, near uh, we come near to the December Congress conference of the African National Congress. Um, you know the front runners, some of them have put their uh, stakes in, uh, uh, in in the field. For example, we've got. Uh, Cyril Ramaphosa finally coming out and saying he wants to come through and head it. And then we have the likes of Nkosizana Zuma, who has recently returned from her stint being head of African Union, also coming into the play as well. Politics matters. Politics matters because it helps to create an environment for doing business, or at least an environment of, an, of certainty for business to make decisions. Uh, unfortunately, in the case that we have, where we have public protector reports uh, raging against rife corruption, uh, the certainty level becomes lower and lower. And businesses tend to start to rethink their investment decisions. Mm -hmm.